Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 3 of How to Code a Discord Bot. This series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is a cryptocurrency miner that lets you easily earn money when you're not using your computer. Salad is partnered with Discord and all of Salad's code is open source. You can use Salad to redeem rewards like Discord Nitro, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Downloading Salad is extremely simple. Just head to the link in the description, follow the download link, run the installer, and you're good to go. Now Salad have given us a special code just for our audience to use. If you use code TDE, you will earn two times the earnings on your Salad account and get that gift card before anyone else. Check out Salad today at the link below. Today I'm going to be introducing you to command arguments, which you already have set up here. And I'm going to be introducing you to the discord.js docs, which basically is the documentation for this entire library we'll be using. Now, if you're using Visual Studio Code again, you'll get these lovely tooltips to help you. So if, for example, you're writing uh, message dot you can see everything you can possibly do with a message here. But if you want to be able to read more extensively into discord.js, which I would recommend you do anyway, you should go to the website I've put in the description. And I'm going to be walking you through how to use this when looking at different aspects of the code. So from the last episode, we have our hello command here. And we're going to actually try and expand that a bit so we can do hello at user. So for example, hello at Sam. And the bot would respond saying hello Sam instead of just hello. So we're going to basically take the message object, which we've taken from up here again, and we're going to get see if there's any user mentioned in that message. So I'm going to show you using the docs here how to do this. So use the search up here for a message. And basically, this is what we're getting from up here in this variable. So we can use any of these from that message. So we're going to want to see from message dot mentions. So we can see down here message mentions. And we see here members, which is going to, which what we want. So members is a collection of members that have been mentioned in the message. So if we go into collection then we can see what do we want, the first member mentioned in the message. So we're going to do let member equal message dot mentions dot members dot first. And make sure you have the brackets at the end of the first, since we can see from here, it has that in the example. And if that would basically, we don't need to put an amount in, since we just want the very first person that is mentioned in the message. Now, if there's not more than one person mentioned in the message, this will still work exactly the same. So you don't need to change anything for that. This basically just is a fail safe that it is always looking for everyone mentioned in the message. So we just need the first person who's mentioned. And then we can do if there's no member mentioned. So if no member using this again, meaning no. Let's let's still send hello, but let's not send the user after it. So we can do message.channel.send hello. And another keyword we're going to use here is else, meaning if this is actually wrong, so if there is a member, and all we need to do for this is open another set of brackets, we're going to message.channel.send again. But this time we're going to use these brackets. So this is the grave key on your keyboard, which is mostly found up near the escape key. So this basically allows you to use variables such as member when you're writing out a message. So for example, we can do hello. And now we're actually going to want to put in a dollar sign and then an opening and a closing curly bracket. This will basically allow us to use variables such as the member variable up here inside of this message. So we're going to put, um, I'm going to use the docs again to show you here. So right now we have a member which in Discord JS terms is a guild member because they're on a server since they've sent the message on a server. And we're going to want to, let's get their username. So let's go to guildmember.user. And here we go, user. And we can see here, let's, let's do their tag. So their tag is basically their username plus the numbers at the end of their name. So for example, let's go here and put in member.user.tag. So this basically should get the member from here their user objects, which you just saw here, and then the tag, which should basically return a tag looking like this. So all going well when we restart the bot right now and head back to our server. Hello should return normal hello and hello at Sam. It says hello Sam star hashtag 6520, which is my username. So that is a very basic usage of arguments. As you can see, they're extremely powerful for when you go on with the code. You could have this as the member to ban and then have a reason written after that and then add those two and interpret it in the code. It's extremely powerful, especially when you use the docs alongside it, because there is there is so much you can do just if you look through the docs. Guild 
AFK channel, uh, chat, you can go through all the channels of a guild, icon, you can look when people joined guilds, when the guild was made, there is literally unlimited possibilities you can use with discord.js documentation. So here we can see a very basic usage of command arguments to get a member from the message, and if there's not a member, send hello, but otherwise send hello and then the members tag. So one thing you might notice is the more commands you put in here, the longer this file is going to get and it's going to keep growing and growing. So a really good thing we can do is separate these commands into a commands folder. So basically we can move all of our commands into this folder up here and that will just save us so much space and clutter in this file. So I'm going to show you in this episode how to turn the hello command into its own file in the commands folder. So to start, we're gonna actually need to load all the commands into this file. Since this file right here is the central uh, file we're gonna run to use the bot, it's gonna need to know what commands it's looking for in here. So firstly, we're gonna need to add the commands to the bot. So we're gonna do bot.commands. This base, we don't need a const this time as bot already exists. We're just adding on a uh, commands value to it. Bot.commands equal to new discord.collection. So this basically means nothing right now, it's just a blank collection of nothing and it's under the bot.commands variable. So I'm going to walk you through this bit of the code, it's a bit tedious but it's once you do it once you'll be able to copy it over to new files. So you're going to need to bring in fs, so const again fs equals require fs basically brings in, fs means file system, so it basically allows node to see whatever files are in this folder and so we'll be able to go into the commands folder and load the commands. So we're going to start with fs in the ready event, fs.readdir, which is read directory. And we're going to need the path to read. So we're going to do dot slash, which means this folder. So it's looking for anything in here. Commands. And it's going to look in the commands folder. So it's going to read the directory of this commands folder, comma. And we're going to need two, this time we're going to need to take in two variables, error, which is the fact that something goes wrong and then files, which returns all the files that it finds. And then we're going to open up a function here. So we now have access to if there's an error and if it finds files. So we're going to do firstly check, make sure there's no error. If error, uh, return, which means to stop there so there's no further errors. Console.log error, error, sorry. Uh, make sure you don't, make sure you keep it as consistent, otherwise it won't work. So make sure it's E or or. So now, basically, if there's an error, it will stop looking for commands there, and it will say, oh, there's actually nothing, and it will let us know. So, next, we're going to want to do this, which is let js file, which I'm just going to have as JavaScript file, equal files. Now, if we think of files right now, it's basically just a list of all files. So we're going to want to filter that down to um, just the file name, because right now we're going to basically have a ton of hello.js ban.js, kick.js. So we just want to know the command name. We don't want this .js part at the end. So we're going to want to do files.filter, which basically is a way of looking through all the files and doing something with them. So basically this filter here is basically going to loop through everything is in this files variable and do whatever we have in here. So we're going to want to say f is equal to the file it's currently on. Open a function. Then we're going to do f.split dot, so it's going to basically split where the dot is, so I'll put this down here again, hello.js, it's going to take where the dot is, it's going to remove that, and it's going to dot pop, so basically pop means just remove whatever we have written here, js. So what we can do is very fast, it's going to let js file equals to this array, this array of files, looping itself and removing the dot and the js. So this, is, this will go from hello.js to just hello. So this is a lot easier, obviously, for if we have down here, command equals hello, we won't have to have hello.js or anything more complicated like that. We'll just have it equal to hello. So before we add the commands to the bot.commands collection, we're going to want to make sure a final failsafe that there is more than one uh, command in there. So if jsfile.length, which is the amount of, com amount of uh, files that is in there, is equal to zero. So if there's just nothing in there, we're going to want to return console.log, let's just say could not find any commands. So that will then stop there, it says there's no commands it could find, which will help you 
just in case you've somehow pointed to the wrong directory or anything like that, you'll know instantly that there's something wrong with it before you get a bunch of errors. So now we're onto the fun part of looping through all these JS files and putting them into the bot commands collection, basically registering them as commands to the bot. So we want to do JS file dot for each. And we're going to need to put um, some kind of variable here that each file will be equal to. So basically, let's say f again. So this means every time it loops, it will set the current one it's on to f. So the first thing we want to do inside this loop is let props equal to require. And we're going to want to use that grave key again because we're going to actually be putting in a variable into this string. So we're going to have require dot slash commands slash. And then we're going to want those dollar sign curly brackets f. So let me explain this to you really quick. We're basically going to let the code require the dot slash commands is this commands folder and slash f is the name of the file. So it's going to basically require the file in this folder, which obviously we'll need to do to use it in the code. So this basically just makes sure it's required. And then we want to do bot dot commands, which we've defined up here, dot set. And we're going to want to set props dot help dot name to props. So this will make more sense as we go along for now, just put it in and I'll explain it when we get there. So let's, this is all we need for this part of the code to have it in there. As long as this is in the ready event, this will then run every time the bot starts and it will load up all the commands for you. There is actually one minor change we need to make up here. So for the let.js file, we need to remove these curly brackets at the start and end since for running through loops like this, since they're only one line, we actually don't need to turn it into a function. So let's start with taking this uh, hello command and putting it into here. So let's make a new file called hello.js inside of our commands folder. So we're going to want to start with exports.run equals async bot message args. Now I'll explain this to you, don't worry. So basically exports means what the file is exporting. So whenever we required it here, so when, we re when it's required up here, it's getting the export of this file. This is going to be exporting this function called run. And um, async basically means it allows us to have stops in the code. For example, if we need to wait for something to happen, or if we need, uh, let's say for example, in the future, you have some kind of uh, database running and you need to make a call to that and wait for it to come back. This async keyword here will make sure that it can wait for that to come back because otherwise it will keep running through the code no matter what and won't stop unless it has to return. So just include this async keyword bot message args is what we're going to actually be passing through the event in our main file in order to run the command with the information we need. So let's begin with our command. So I copied it here already. We can remove the if command equals hello now because we're going to be basically making it know that from the main file and the rest of it we can pretty much leave the exact same. We're going to need to then add in exports dot help equals and then an open then a curly bracket. So in here is where we basically want to set if you look back here, we have props.help.name. So this is where we set that name, what the command is equal to. Name is basically what the bot itself will look for to call this file. So this is basically what you want the user to have to type to use this command. So name, which is going to set as um, hello. So now we have the command that has that runs this with this name. And in here, it will load it in with that name and then this file. So basically, if it will basically look in this set for hello. It will find this because the name is set to hello and it will run this run code up here. So if you remember down here is our message event. This is where all messages will come through. The bot doesn't know to use any of these commands or this folder for anything yet. So we need to make it actually look to see if it is a command and if so, run the command, whatever one it needs from this folder. So we're going to want to use let command file equal. We're going to be using our bot.commands up here that we have all the commands in bot.commands dot get and then we're going to just put it in command so it's going to basically look for hello in this list which it will have because the name of this is set to hello so if someone runs hello it will find that and then we need to basically add if it does find it so if command file if this basically means if command file is not null so basically if it exists and if it's found one command file dot run bot message args so we have just passed in the bot message args that it needs from here because basically in this file there is no const bot, there is no uh, const message, there is, it doesn't exist, there's no message, there's no args, this file has no idea what we're talking about 
unless we pass them in through this file, which we are now doing. So, if they find the command file from this list, which it should, since we have it defined here, it's going to do command file dot run. We can see dot run is function here, so it's going to go to this function here with these passed in variables from here, and then that allows us to use all of those in here. So if we restart the bot now, it should say bot online, it will find all of your commands, and going in here and doing exclamation mark hello, you get your hello, and hello at Sam. It says hello Sam. So we successfully turned this file, which just had our commands listed right openly here, into a system where we can have a new folder, so we can even duplicate this new file, let's call it by.js, paste it in, change this to by, and then just literally change these words to by, and then restart the bot. We now literally have just changed it to also have a by command. So you can see we can literally duplicate these and make as many commands as we want, and all we have to do is make files in here, and as long as you have the dot run and the dot help components, we, they are a command and they'll work. So we can you can make as many commands as you want now, and they don't have to be in this file. The bot will instantly recognize them every time they start from this. And that is a much easier way than trying to define them all in here. So that concludes this episode of how to code a Discord bot. I'll uh, see you guys in the next episode. I will mainly be discussing uh, events, since right now we're only using the message event and the ready event, and there is a lot more to explore there. So I'll see you guys in the next episode.